Okay, this is my second video. Um, I'm still working on the sous vide. It should be coming out here in um, probably about 20, 30 minutes. Um, but I wanted to make a cake for Easter and I have been watching a lot of Phyllis Stokes and I'm really enjoying um, her videos and it reminds me a lot of my mom who was my grandmother. Um, my grandmother raised me, my grandparents did, both uh, my mom, uh, keep calling her mom, my grandma and my pop. Um, so a lot of her recipes are a lot of things I remember my mom doing and I love making things from scratch. I love cooking, I love baking. So I am kind of doing her recipe for a sheet cake, coconut cake. I don't have exactly everything she has. Like she used fresh coconut, obviously during the pandemic. I can't go out and get fresh coconut, but I do have um, flaked coconut that I can use. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using a stand mixer. She did not. She used a, you know, just a hand mixer, which of course back in the day, that's what, um, you know, we had. I remember just using a hand mixer growing up, but my hubby, hubby was nice enough to buy me this um, a few years ago uh, as a gift and I love it and it makes things easier. So we have um, two sticks of uh, softened Butter. It was. Um, I actually put it in the microwave because it wasn't soft. Because I'm just now doing it, but it should be okay. It's kind of more on the melted side instead of the soft side. Um, we have two cups of sugar. We have two and uh, three fourths cup of uh, self rising flour, which we will sift. Four eggs. Uh, it's going to be some teaspoon and um, which is one teaspoon and four large. Um, four large eggs. So we're gonna, first we're gonna put in the butter, the two sticks of butter. And then we're gonna add our two cups of sugar and we're gonna cream this together. And I'll be back when that's creamed. And as you can see, it's now blended. It's probably taken about two or three minutes that I've made it. Um, where it's light and fluffy. And now I'm gonna add in four eggs, one at a time. And these are, as you can tell, they're mighty bright. Well, a couple of them are. The other ones might be a little bit older, but I got these eggs from the farmer's market. And it really does, I feel like it, it, it makes a difference. And I love the richness of the yolk. And then I'm also going to add, I'm also going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. And once that's blended, then we're going to sift in, um, we're going to add to this, I'll turn this down because it's pretty much ready to go. We will add in um, that self-rising flour. So it already has your salt and a little bit of uh, baking soda in it. So you don't have to, you know, add more salt and stuff. But um, I'm going to add, she said to add another half teaspoon of um, baking soda. Make sure it's baking soda and not um, baking powder. And put that in there. Then we're going to turn this off and we're going to alternate between um, the buttermilk and the flour. Actually, I need another bowl to sift it in, so I'll be right back. I totally forgot to sift it into another bowl. Okay, so now I have another bowl. I'm going to sift this just, um, you know, my mom used to have one of those old fashioned ones where you, um, you hand cranked it and stuff, but um, these little sifts here work just as, just as well can really don't take up much space in the um, in your cabinet. I have mine tucked away in a little drawer. So, but um, yeah. 
had a little hand crank time. So you, then you just sift this. And that'll incorporate everything and get all these little lumps out. So I make it, I always make a mess. I'm never um no I'm not a neat cook, that's for sure. So there we go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna alternate the flour and the buttermilk. So first we're gonna add about a third of the flour, and you want to start this on low because it will um Splash. So, we got that much flour. Let that get incorporated in. And then you're going to do about a third of the buttermilk. And then another third of the flour. Again, me making a mess. Oven's at 350. Now we're going to put this in our Pyrex pan. You know, sometimes I miss my kids being young and little because you know they would love to eat the beater. But now, if my son was here, he'd definitely get it. So my son. He goes to um, college locally, and he also works at a plant on the weekends. My daughter, um, she is, I think I told my son is 19. He'll be 20 in June. My daughter is, uh, she just turned 22, and we're so excited for her because she just bought a house, and so she's all moved into her house. And, uh, of course, now she's, you know, with this quarantine and jobs and everything. So, of course, we all have a little bit of worry. But right now she's still working. And, you know, hopefully this will all work out and everybody can go back and not worry about, you know, job security. Even though I know lots of people have lost their jobs already. But even my son, you know, he works at a plant and it's, it's kind of worrisome. You know whether they're going to have enough work to do it's uh it's scary out there i get it but anyway okay so we're going to put this in i think this is like a nine by 13 uh, pyrex pan i believe it's like a it's basically a casserole um, pan so you're going to spread this out and um it already looks good i haven't you know this is a new recipe that i'm trying of um, Phyllis is so um, it smells good though very very good so I'm going to now transfer this into the oven for 350 degrees um, for about 30 ish minutes you're gonna stick a toothpick in um, and if it comes out clean then you know it's done and I'll be back to work on the icing okay I'm gonna add um, it's two tablespoons of butter we're gonna melt that and we just want this to get warm. We don't want it to get super hot. Um, oop, let me turn my burner on right. So we'll turn that. We just want this to melt. And then we want, once this melts, then we're going to add a fourth of a cup of buttermilk. Um, again, just to get that warm. And if we need a little more, I got a little more buttermilk. She says in her recipe, in Phyllis's recipe, to use um, a little bit of the coconut 
water, but she used a, a whole fresh coconut. So she had, you know, coconut water out of the coconut. I don't have that. I might have some coconut extract. I'm not certain if I do. I can look and see. If so, I might add a um, teaspoon of the coconut extract to that. And then I have, um, she used real coconut. I have the, you know, the coconut flake. All right, this looks good. Then we're gonna add in our fourth cup. And we just want this to get warm. And then I'm just gonna turn the stove off and then I'm gonna add a couple of cups. Oh, my thing is powdered sugar is so messy. A couple of cups. She said two to three cups and um, she said that she wants it like a, not a thick icing kind of, but it's gonna be a little bit runny because you're just gonna pour it over that sheet cake. I don't know, hers always looks like so much more. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add more of that buttermilk in too. Yeah, we're gonna need some more buttermilk. So really a tablespoon at a time. You don't want too much. It's about a tablespoon. Let's see where we are with it. All right, I think I want a little more. It's not quite as runny as I wanted it. So this actually I think is going to be a good icing because you got a little bit of the tartness of the buttermilk to the sweetness of, you know, of all that confectioner sugar. And um, I did not use unsweetened coconut because I didn't have any, which I know basically is what she used because she used just fresh co coconut. So mine is sweetened. So that looks about a nice spreadable icing. Um, I'm going to look and see if I have a little bit of coconut extract. If not, I'll put some vanilla. So look what I found. I did find some um, coconut extract. So I'll put about a teaspoon. I'm just going to eyeball it. That's about a teaspoon. And that should make it taste coconutty. And then she said to put the um, coconut in there. She didn't say how much because she was using fresh coconut. So I'm just going to eyeball it where it looks pretty good to me. I had it in the freezer, so. I know I just want enough to cover cake. It's nice and coconutty. Yeah, I'm gonna need some more, I think. That's gonna be good. I can smell it. it smells very coconutty. I think this is gonna be perfect for Easter. Oh no, when I think of Easter, coconut is always involved. Um, I had one of my stepmoms, excuse me, step grandmothers, I had a lot of a lot of step grandmothers. My biological mom. I've been married six times, so <laughs> um, glad my grandparents. You know, they had me since I was two weeks old, and uh, but my biological mom was in my life um, here and there. But um, anyway, so back to the story. She made every Easter. Um, it was the my fourth step grandmother. She made a lamb cake. So it was shaped like a lamb and it had coconut all, oh, it was, and it's dusted with powdered sugar. And she made that every Easter. And even long after my biological mother divorced her son, she still was in our lives. She still, every Easter would, you know, bring us this lamb cake. And, um, you know, they've since passed, um, her and her husband and, um, you know, I'm, I miss her. She actually was one of the ones that treated us like true grand grandkids. And so I really appreciated it. So, all right, so the icing's done. I'm just waiting on the cake. And once it's done, um, I will be right back. Okay, one other thing. Um, I think she uses salted butter. I don't use salted butter. I always use unsalted. So I'm just gonna do a little sprinkle of um, like a pinch of salt and 
even though it's really sweet, salt is always good in any of your sweet baked goods. So um, it just brings out sweetness, it balances the sweet. Um, Cause you always, you know how you always crave a little sweet, a little salty. So that kind of um, plays into it. That's why you put salt. Um, it's just a balanced thing. So um, we're about five minutes till I'm gonna check the cake and see if a toothpick comes out clean and then I'll be back. Okay, this took a little longer. She said about 30 minutes, but hers was just a metal pan. This is a glass um, pan. So mine took about 40, 45 minutes. I, had a, I set it for 25, you know, you always check it a little bit sooner and it was nowhere near done at 25 minutes. So I set it, I think for another 10 minutes and then five minute increments after that. Um, and what you want is when you stick a toothpick in, it comes out clean. There's no cake on there. So, um, you know, it's done. So now it's just got to cool. The icing's ready to go. Okay, my cake is pretty much cooled and I'm just kind of reheating my icing up just a little bit because it kind of cooled off. Um, correction, um, when I was talking about one of my step-grandmothers, um, my mom actually has been married seven times, not six times. I had said six, but she's actually been married seven times. So, so let's get this kind of where it's a little loose and then we're going to spread it on the cake. Now, I went back and rewatched her video and I thought once she put it on the cake it wasn't enough icing so I'm gonna see how this turns out um, if I feel like I need more icing I'll just make another batch and put it on the, the cake but we're gonna make it as is as she did it again except for I didn't have a real coconut so all right I think that's loose enough there so now we're gonna Put it on the cake and she did little dollops and then she spread it around so i'm sure you can see all the dogs that that one that you just saw is my daughter's puppy and um, i'm watching her for the weekend and then we have ours which is the plain brown dog he he just turned well we assume he turned two um he was a rescue and um so we got him when he was about, they think he was about three months old. So um, we adopted him in June. So we'll say he's, you know, he will have had him for two years in June. So, all right. Let's see. Might be enough frosting. I just thought hers looked a little thin. And I'm a... Uh, I love lots of frosting, but this might work out because I really don't need the extra calories. Okay, and that's what the cake looks like all frosted. I think it's enough frosting. So I'm gonna try a piece and uh, see how it tastes. Okay, I've cut a piece. Um, it's a little lopsided because it's the edge of the plate. So, but I just wanted to give you a sneak peek. Sorry, like I said, this is my first time doing this and I'm trying to figure out all this. So I'm gonna take a taste. I, I wanna note that it was a little crumbly um, coming out. Um, so it's high crumb. Mm, actually, it's very good. It's, it's pretty moist. Um, Mm. It's going to be a good cake for tomorrow. Um, I'm going to have to wrap it up and make sure I get it out of the house because I'll sit here and eat this whole thing. But um, yeah, it's good. Um, I think I would cook it in a different pan. I wouldn't do it in the Pyrex because it took too long and I think it dried it out just a tad. It is moist. But I think why it's crumbly is because um, I think I cooked it too long. Though it, it wasn't done in the middle. It was just jiggle, jiggle, jiggle every time I pulled the toothpick out. So I would suggest not using the Pyrex and go with an actual, you know, uh, stainless steel pan or Teflon pan to um, cook it in. Same size. I think it's a 9 by 13. Um, but 
yeah, I think the, the glass one just, it cooked the outside, I think, a little uh, faster. The inside, it took too long, so it dried it out, which is the piece that I got. On the edge, I say dried out. It's not, I mean, I've had much drier cake. I've had cake that's like sandpaper. This, this is actually good, good flavor. It's pretty moist other than, like I said, I think on the edges, it just overcooked in that pan. But I will definitely make this one again. Um... And maybe I might actually, you know, when this uh, quarantine thing is over with and um, buy a real coconut and make it exactly how she made it with the um, coconut water and the fresh coconut that's not sweet. And, um, and then I would bake it in the same kind of pan she did. Um, happy Easter and like and subscribe if you like um, what you see. Like I said, it's a work in progress. I'm, I'm learning all this. It's all brand new. So bear with me.